what we are going to do today, creating forms with subforms, uh, I cannot go into all the details. If you don't feel very comfortable with access, you may still run into trouble. So you, you probably need more than what I'm discussing today. What I, I want you to know is that Access is not an easy program. So I made a CD-ROM with more than 1500 slides that goes into all the details you need to know in order to feel comfortable with Genesis PC. Thousands of people have already benefited from this CD. And they have learned, among other things, how to make forms with subforms. But for subforms you usually need queries, so you have to know how, to, how you can make queries and how you connect them. This is my simple database that I am working with today. And all these tables have a one-to-many relationship. One to many, one to many. On the one side is always a primary key in my case. That is an auto number. So this is an auto number, that is an auto number, this is an auto number, that is an auto number, and this one is an auto number. The many sides are always the foreign keys. So this is a foreign key, that is a foreign key, this is a foreign key, and these two are foreign keys. And I'm showing you what we are going to do. First I put all those subforms in one form. So this is the main form. This is one subform, the department of that specific employee. This is a subform with all the timesheets for that employee. And this is a subform with all the orders that that employee plays, let's say, in the cafeteria. And this subform has another subform inside that says what was in that particular order, three items in this case. Uh, then I decided not to do it this way, but use a tabbed form. The tabbed form has in this case four tabs. So it tells me here where the em who the employee is and I can go to the next one, and then it shows me in which department that person is. Then I show the timesheets for that specific employee, Barbara Brown in this case, until I go to another one. And the same story about orders. This is the order subform, and it has an orders detail sub subform. So how do you make that thing? The, the secret is usually that you make queries for the subforms and then you make those subforms. So you need to know what to put in the queries. This is the orders subform query. You take from it the order ID from the orders table, the item ID from the orders detail table, the employee ID from the orders table. Then I made an orders sub subform query. It has a different setup. It has the employee ID from the orders table, the order ID from the details table, and the item ID from the details table. The item, the quantity, the price, and then I did a, a subtotal, close the query. And I have another query, that is the subform query for the timesheet. Employee ID from the timesheets table on the many side. Week date, work hours, vacation hours, that all speaks for itself. A calculation here. Okay. Then, which is a very important step. You create those subforms first. The order subform itself is not a data sheet. If you make that a data sheet, you cannot put a sub subform in there. So this one was a, a regular singular form one. And now we are going to create a tabbed form, something like this. I'm going to do that from scratch. So you will go through all the steps one by one. Create. In this case, I want a blank form in order to create that tabbed form. It's a blank form. You are going to put on that blank form, design, a tapped tool, a tapped control. Select it, click in the range where you want it. Then I'm going to say to this total form with a tab control on it, what this is going to be the main one on page one. So we are going to add the table employees to it. Go to the design screen, 
go to the properties of that form, you can find that here at the spot where the two rulers meet, right click there, the properties, and put a record source behind all of this, whether you are in data or under all, the record source is always the first one. Drop down, employees table. So from now on, all the fields from the employees table are behind this form. We are going to put them on here. So I go to design again, and I would like to add existing fields. Employee ID, shift, pay type, and I move them all in here. So here when I go, I have 16 employees. When I go to the next employee, I get another person, and another person, and another person. Now I would like on page 2, I would like to find the department of that employee. The department is in the employee's department sub form. So let's put that form in here. So we go to the design view again. We go to page 2, design, and we add a sub form or a sub report. Click on that button. Click in the in, on the page where you want it and drag it. And it's going to ask, do you want to use an existing table or query? Don't go for that. Always go for an existing form if you can. So that is going to be the department subform. Next. And in this screen, you always define your connection. What is the connection between the main form, that's the employees, and this one? That is the department ID. Department ID of that employee and the department ID of the department's table. Next, you don't care about this thing. I'm going to delete that anyway. Finish. So I, I delete that label on top there. So now we have the departments for that employee in accounting. Go to the design screen again. Then we would like all the timesheets for that person. So I need a new page here. Right click on page two. Insert a page. Again, we want on there the employee's timesheet subform. Correct? So we are going to create a subform again. Design, subform. Click where you want it and draw, drag it. This time use an existing form, the employee's timesheet subform. Next, define your own. This time it's the employee ID. You want a timesheet for that specific employee on the main form. And you want the timesheets that are hooked up to that same employee ID. Next, don't worry about that label. We are going to delete it anyway. So now I have the timesheets for a specific employee. I, I want you to know that I can also add timesheets to people. So if I s click in here, you could make that a default value. I put today's date in there. That person worked 40 hours. No vacation hours. So at the moment I, uh, I click somewhere else, then the total pay goes up to 4,000. And when I go to 2, I go back to 1. There is that 4,000 again. So that record was beautifully saved for the right employee. I want one more tab. Insert a page. And there we are going to insert the order subform. That order subform has already the order sub subform in there. How did we add that sub subform to that one? We used the same trick as I showed you with all these tabs, you insert the subform. But those forms have different queries behind them. One has the sub subform query and one has the subform query. So do the same thing again. Use an existing form. The order subform, for that has already the order sub subform in there. Next, don't forget to link them together. Employee ID. Employee ID, next, finish, and delete that thing. 
see what we got here. So these are the orders for that employee. Now I would like to see that this is the employee, etc. So I want to change those captions and then I would like to say, say here who is the employee we are talking about. Correct. So we go to design again, click on page one, click on that label and get the properties. Page one we are going to change into employees or employee. Page two we are going to change into department. Then we are going to add here who is that employee. So we are going to insert a text box. Click there and click again. It's unbound. So in the control source, we are going to say equals the field first name. That's how I call that field. Space, ampersand, space, double quote, space, double quotes. I am inserting a literal space. Space, ampersand, space, and then the field last name. Okay, so we have in there this formula. Okay, so now when I check in the regular view, you will see this is too, I, I should blow that up, but I don't. So if I go to another employee, then that name will change. So if I want a new order, notice that I have three scroll bars now. This one regulates which employee, that one regulates which order, and that one regulates which order detail. So this person, Barbara Bush, has two orders so far. Now I would like here to the, the right employee ID to pop up. So I'm going to set a default there. It automatically takes a new order number, but that part has not been implemented yet. So we go to that employee ID and we say we would like under, for, under data a default value. And the default value should be from the database based on the form, which forms, loaded form, and form one. Why form one? Because I haven't saved anything yet. Okay, so let's keep it called form one. What do you want from form one? You want the employee ID from form one. You want that to be the default value. So at the moment I click OK, that is the default value. So now when I go here and I go again to, uh, who did I have? I think I had Barbara Bush, her orders. She has only one order so far. I go to the next order. You see there is her employee number, number three. I type a date in there. Control semicolon gives you today's date. I give her an order. Let's say she, she would like a pizza. Everything should automatically update when I click somewhere else. It gives me a total order of 1052 times 525. As I told you before, if this went too fast or too many questions that you want to be solved, your answer can be found at Genesis PC.